the third part of the Sophistic 2018 New Features presentation, I'd like to talk about general features of the structural analysis and FEA programs, as well as the new features of the graphical post-processing program Result Viewer. To give you an overview, I opened a new features brochure, starting with program Aqua for cross-section and material input, we have two basic new features. One of them is the new unit sets, which you have already seen in the section of the SSD graphical input with configurable unit sets and new revised unit sets for US customary units. Another new feature is the option to request shear design for flanges of standard T-beam sections. In the revised cross-section input dialog, you have the opportunity to switch the shear design to yes and define at which positions along the flanges the shear design should be performed in addition to the web shear design which is performed per default. Also, we allow to uh, request an additional shear design at the interface between web and plate. Looking at new features of the superpositioning module Maxima, we have already learned to you know the new task combine results. Of course, the equivalent input command sum is available in text input. In addition to the opportunity to sum results, Maxima can now perform selective superpositioning in text input. So in addition to selecting different elements like structural lines or structural areas, which is usually only influencing the amount of output of Maxima, you can now also request that the whole superpositioning is only performed for the selective member, which should increase performance and applicability of the module. In a basic example of Maxima, I can point out first of all the new record sum for summarization of results without any superpositioning or automatic combination. We have already seen this in the SSD part of the online presentation. In addition, I like to show the option how to request for a selective superpositioning, which is performed here for a slab example in the input record sub for the superpositioning commands. We have to request to superimpose for um, shell element bending moment results. We select a structural area number 12. And with this switch option S, we request a selective superpositioning. So not only the printout is affected, but also the module selects only the elements of this structural area for superpositioning. Looking at steel design features, we have already seen that the um, structural stability of members uh, can now define intermediate supports and lateral restraints. We can also um, use the same cross-sectional classification uh, functionalities like in AQB for the steel design, which should give the user more flexibility to perform the stability checks without running a respective steel design task beforehand. So you can also uh, use BDK, the buckling, lateral torsional buckling design module to classify the cross-sections for the appropriate member checks. In addition, we have several additional settings to influence the exponents in the interaction formula for the um, cross-section checks for steel design. And we can also influence um, the prescribed stresses to ask the module Aqua for an effective cross-section. Further detailed information about the new steel design features can be found together with helpful examples in the verification manual. The verification manual of version 2018 has been enhanced with additional examples. So for example, the DCE EN30 
steel column with class 4 section example should give reference for the appropriate workflow or different possibilities to consider a class 4 effective section in stability checks. To um, show you um, briefly how these lateral supports which we have seen in the stability of members task how they are reflected in the text input I should point you to this a BDK standard example where we run several uh, reference examples with um, BDK and you see here we have the commands CVA, CVE or, um, with the respective options to set um, boundary conditions and um, intermediate supports like you see here um, in the command reference CVM for intermediate support, CVL for lateral restraints. So the full functionality is of course available in text input. Going one step further, looking at results and improvements for the structural analysis, we should point out that there are several improvements which should uh, require detailed attention and are not fully covered in this short overview presentation. First of all, uh, looking at the geotechnical um, module TALPA for 2D geotechnical FEM simulations. We have improved the stability or the load stepping method with an additional arc length control option so we can handle the design approach 3 and the dual factoring approaches which are prescribed in Eurocode 7 with a much stabler algorithm and we have also improved performance of the parallel element processing for the quad elements in Talpa. Looking at shell and slab design, we have improved the um, available design methods with an additional new method which is called layer design. So for several uh, design tasks BMS will automatically switch to a new layer design method. So for example for stress analysis which you can request in BMS or several SLS serviceability analyses. Of course the SKU2 and the three layer reinforcement is now switched to the layer design, the more effective, more accurate layer design per default. Also, the layer design is active if you perform shell design for post tangent slabs. The ULS design, the standard ULS design for 2D uh, rectangular reinforcement, is still set to the default method in order to obtain the conservative same results. Just a short view into the um, additional options here. Here is an additional standard example for uh, shell um, slab design. We see there are several um, options or there are several inputs here in this example. So we see we have a standard definition of reinforcement parameters. We have an ultimate limit state design which is not influenced by this new layer design. But if we look at this serviceability checks where we request a concrete stress check, due to the request of this stress check, the additional layer or the new layer design is triggered and provides the user with a more extensive output and a graphical information about the stress state inside the elements. So in this case we focus on an element with a maximum um, loading and see the stresses and the results in this graphical representation along with the directions of reinforcement and local axis. Focusing on the next new feature we should point out that the issue of nonlinear temperature gradient is a very important feature for bridge designers especially if we perform bridge design according to US ASHTO and British Standard. In the version 2016 there was already a feature to evaluate the global equivalent loads of such nonlinear gradients, which is quoted here, but with 2018 we are also um, able to consider the remaining eigenstress part for an AQB stress evaluation. 
Here um, is the respective benchmark in the verification manual, which can be checked if you need further reference. And I like to just briefly um, show you an example um, project. Um, in this case, it is uh, important to understand that the graphical input or the input facilities are not yet completely streamlined. So in case you have a nonlinear temperature um, on cross sections, there is additional input, uh, input effort required. And I think we plan to improve this input in the new next versions, in the upcoming versions. In this case, we handled the input by specifying additional stress points over the height of uh, graphically input cross sections. And these stress points are then used as reference for specific loadings. You see we have a stress point called T7, which is now uh, loaded with a specific point temperature. And we then follow all the stress points or try to get all the stress points of this cross section and assign it with pointwise temperatures. So we at least have a graphical possibilities to input such a gradient. And in the project, we request um, a stress check with AQB of this load case, and we can obtain um, a respective plot of the resulting stresses within result viewer. So please keep in mind that this nonlinear temperature gradient can be considered for single representative temperature gradients and should be then combined in the AQB superpositioning during the design procedure stress check procedure of bridges. There is no automatic enveloping or worst case determination within this workflow. It's um, uh, in this case um, only available for single representative temperature cases and should then be combined uh, manually. The next section, last section of this third uh, part of the online presentation should briefly deal with Result Viewer. In the Result Viewer, we have redesigned um, a lot of interface elements to enable a more optimized workflow to guide users through filtering and selecting elements. We have implemented a lot of new results, like for example, effective cross-section properties, uh, improvements for a display of circular cross-sectional elements. We can now filter and select start and end sections of beams, and we have improvements in the stress display of composite sections. I like to show two additional new features um, of the result viewer. One is to use the diagram assistant to generate diagram plots such as the envelopes of bending moments for a life load evaluation of this bridge, for example. So in order to obtain such plots, you can now use the, the task or the option diagram assistant in result viewer. You can request a plot along a CABD bridge axis, select the bending moment for display, select axis, select a load case, and then finish this request and obtain this plot without navigating through all the necessary selection. I think this is a very powerful improvement for bridge designers. Next um, very powerful improvement for result viewer is a better integration of result output result transfer to uh, spreadsheet programs like Microsoft Excel. So you can now request a generated table to be directly exported to an Excel sheet. And of course, this exporting to an Excel sheet can also be recalled and rerun in the um, batch mode. So I like to show you, for example, this example here, where we, uh, which we already know, this is the steel frame example where we have performed a calculation of single load cases, where we also have uh, performed these combined results 
task and we now like to use result viewer to uh, get a table of normal force shear and bending moments and this result we can now request to be directly exported to an excel sheet which we specify here we can specify destination and additional information and the interesting thing is um, upon requesting this we can of course request the export to excel immediately so we obtain an excel sheet in the project folder with the respective information and of course when we have selected this table to be sent to Excel, we can reuse this sending to Excel during the batch computation, which is then quoted with the path of the Excel sheet. And of course, the Excel sheet is generated and filled with the requested data.